The October tier shifts have just been released and with that we got a whole ton of surprising tier shifts mainly talking about OU. First up, let's talk about the OU usage stats itself right off the bat. You can notice Great Tusk's usage has dropped down significantly down to 30%. This is to no one's surprise. Glassquare has severely impacted the meta since its release and you will hear me say that probably a lot throughout this video. Tusk has adapted to Glassquare by becoming more offensive with Ice Spinner, however still though Glassquare is just Glassquare and I won't be surprised if next month Tusk drops down a bit further in usage actually. Ogre Pond's high usage at number 6 is that no one's surprise has been pretty good both offensively and defensively and honestly speaking it is good it doesn't have any attack boosting and body aspect ability. Blood Moon Ursula is at number 5 but I don't think this needs any introduction. Literally Blood Moon. But Blood Moon indeed as well has helped the rise of Blissey as that it's literally the only reliable Blood Moon Ursula counter. Blissey takes little to no damage from Blood Moon Ursula attacks compared to other defensive Pokemon like Corviknight. While yes the shock from NU to OU is incredible this also means once Blood Moon is banned to Ubers if ever, it will be dropping right back into NU if not at least drop into usage by a lot. Iron Moth has also climbed up the ranks super quickly thanks to a particular set you see on screen. If you guys remember, this type of EV spread strategy was something similar back on Sandy Shocks where you min max the EVs just enough so then you can get the booster energy off for speed and not for just special attack, which is the same case for Iron Moth. In any case, this set has proven to be extremely good on a hyper offensive teams, especially after it gets its fiery dance boost, it can pretty much clear the game for the opponent. Iron Moth has also taken advantage of its flat out pure special attacking booster energy sets. These sets allow Iron Moth to go full bazooka on the offensive end, especially now if you put that in combination with Sticky Web's Rubombi, which has also seen an uprise in usage due to how powerful hazards are in Generation 9 at this moment. Rillaboom's also seen a rise right back into OU, its rightful place. I mean, this was obvious, Grassy Glide has helped its viability incredibly well despite the nerf to its base power, and I know its new Twin Syndrome is still a thing, but one of the reasons for Hammerard also dropping severely low because of a Rillaboom and it can switch in and threaten out with a powerful grassy glide or just rip off Samrod as a lead option. Again, I know it's not the surefire reason for Hamrod dropping a bit, but it's just another add-on to an already weird metagame. Speaking of Pokemon falling, Landers has also seen a massive drop-off in the metagame now. Out of the four major ground types in the tier, it is definitely the weakest now, especially since Gliscor is released. Right now, Gliscor is just a better, more versatile, utility ground and flying type. Landers not having knockoff, Toxic or Defog is starting to really hurt it because its utility factor that it's once had is now really diminished. Tinglu, Tusk, Gliscor just offer more utility than Landers could ever as of this moment in the metagame, thus its drop, while it's shocking, should come in no surprise, and honestly speaking, it might drop down to UU or UUBL. Remember when Gloking was so so good in the post-home metagame? I even made a video talking about how its chili reception in combo with the Black Excalibur at the time was extremely good, but now it has dropped off so heavily. Its poison typing started to come back to bite it because even though it can take off toxic spikes from Gliscor, Gliscor can bait them with EQ or even a knockoff. Glasgow's immense popularity has definitely seen its huge decrease, and while Tusk ground type moves wasn't an issue beforehand, there are also other threatening Pokemon like Blood Moon Ursula, who can run rough shard all over Glow King. The meta right now doesn't favor its passivity, and hyper offensive teams are becoming more powerful by the minute. Honestly speaking, Jotonian Slow King might serve it better in the metagame with the ever more popular Glasgow because at least it can take off the threatening EQ and only has knockoff to worry about, as it avoids toxic spikes with its heavy duty boots. Even with that though, there's still other threatening Pokemon like Roaring Moon who could still deal a number of damage either to Jotonian Slow King or just regular Glow King. Oh, and actually speaking of Roaring Moon, talk about a shot right back into OU. Its usage has skyrocketed into the OU metagame. Knockoff was a significant buff, but its ability to wall, water, and grass type attacks from Wellspring Ogrepon has also come to be reliable. It can come in on a switch and set up with Dragon Dance to further increase its offensive firepower. Obviously against play rough variants it does struggle, but other than that though, D-Dance, Knockoff, Scale Shot, or Dragon Claw, and EQ is a pretty good moveset for this ancient beast. It's no wonder why its popularity has definitely risen and back up again. Other than Empoleon probably being an OU for the first and final time in Generation 9, although I'm not hoping so, that's pretty much all the relevant things going on specifically in the OU usage stats. But I'm not done, and before I keep going on, if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more competitive content just like this. It's free and helps me know you guys want more Pokemon content just like this, and hey, we're almost at 10k subs, so be sure to join to be part of the before 10k gang. With that though, let's get back to the video. Garchomp has finally hit the UU tier, and while many have speculated Scale Shot Loaded Dice will finally keep relevant into the OU tier just slightly, sadly it just wasn't enough for this iconic gen 4 OU monster. It probably isn't a new combo of new toy syndrome and power creep, but nevertheless, this is a sad day for all Garchomp fans. On a real note though, I'm not sure if it'll stay down in UU just because it's too powerful, but it might be subjected to UUBL tier, or might rise back into OU just slightly because of the new toy syndrome that'll wear off, but again, it's just not the same as it used to be, and 
yeah, it just sucks that Power Creep is really taking out Garchomp. And it's finally hidden now during the Teal Mask DLC. Rotom, Azumarill, and Pelipper drops are also at no surprise. Wellspring Ogre Pond is too popular and completely walls them both alongside Rain Teams in general. Although Rain Teams and Yu are about to go a little crazy. Glotchai from being one of the West Walking Wake counters have fallen down to Yu Yu hard as it literally gets hard walled by Gliscor and a harp. EQ toxic doesn't affect Gliscor and Gliscor can fire back its own EQ to get rid of it. Heat Train and Garganacle have also dropped down into Yu Yu. Garganacle dropped down to strong attackers like Blood Moon in combination with Ogron being a strong counter to it and similar story with Heat Train. Gliscor as well also hasn't helped both of their cases and while in previous generations Heat Train could support with toxic it no longer has that and thus it gets beat really easily in this hyper offensive metagame. Garganacle's rock typing is starting to catch up with it as a lot of common meta threats are making it pay for trying to do its stall salt cure shenanigans. Both were kind of terror dependent, especially Heat Chan with its 4 times weakness to ground, and I've said this time and time again, but Pokemon that are utility defensive Pokemon that rely on terror to do really well do put a strong stranglehold on teams, and thus these two dropping, while shocking, comes at no surprise. Other than the lousy 3 dropping down to Yu Yu, which we all knew that was going to happen anyways, another thing to keep an eye on is for the usage release in November and how close Loma Mola and Sarah Ledge were to being an OU. It'll be interesting to see how good they will be as the metagame develops and whether or not they can actually crack into the OU tier, and in Sarah Ledge's cases once again. But these are, in my opinion, probably the most significant changes slash note. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the usage stats in general, and thank you to my members for the continued support on this channel. If you guys wish to be a member over here on YouTube or Patreon, the links are down below. And be sure to also join the Chompy Discord. With that though, I'll catch you guys in the next video, and thanks for watching as always.